Federal officials announced this week that almost 206,000 Wisconsin consumers had selected health plans in the federal marketplace in the second enrollment period under the Affordable Care Act. That's a one-year increase of 58 percent. But to talk about the Affordable Care Act and small businesses, thanks to Marianne O'Brien Markowitz, Regional Administrator of the U.S. Small Business Admi Administration. Marianne, welcome to Wisconsin Eye. Thank you, Steve. It's Let's a talk to be here. generically. What opportunities <clears throat> does the ACA offer small businesses? Before we get down into some of these self employed, and well, anyway, just uh, the 10,000 foot sure. view. Um, you know, it offers accessible, affordable, quality health care. You know, we know from our experience with small businesses that getting access to health care for employees has been a number one concern for small businesses as far back as 1976. And we also know that prior to reform, small businesses were paying as much as 18% more than large companies for the exact same coverage. So, you know, this is all about making um, healthcare affordable and accessible, and that's what it does through the marketplaces. Marianne, what lessons has the SBA learned about uh, ACA and small businesses in the first year or two of the rollout, please? Sure. Well, you know, I think, you know, we've been out there since the very beginning, partnered with HHS, getting the word out, teaching small businesses through counseling sessions. We've conducted over 2,000 counseling sessions across the country around the ACA. And I think we found in the beginning there was just a lot of misinformation about what this, um, what the benefits of the law actually were. So I think as we've gotten small businesses really focused on the benefits and the um, requirements under this, this new law, uh, we've found that they're very focused and we can help provide them with the information that they need to do their own analysis. Um, the number of small businesses in Wisconsin, uh, thanks to your staff for providing it, it really mm -hmm. in intrigues me. Let's, let's talk about self-employed businesses. Mm -hmm. Now, th thanks to your staff, 147,209 self-employed businesses. So let's talk about what are their options under the ACA. Sure, no, those are some of the people that are helped the most. I mean, and so the 147,209 uh, sole proprietors, we call them, uh, have access to health care through the individual exchange. Um, that's what this open enrollment period was that's for That's healthcare.gov, right? Yes, healthcare.gov. Okay. It's all healthcare.gov. Which, <laughs> which now works swimmingly well, right? Very, very well. What a difference <laughs> a year makes, right? Yes, yes. Um, so these were the same, uh, these were the same sole proprietors that really struggled for um, health care in the past. So before reform, we found uh, a lot of people that we were counseling that wanted to go into entrepreneurship, felt that they couldn't leave their um, current employment because they had job lock. They felt that if they left their current employment that they would uh, face a situation where they either couldn't get uh, health care coverage because of a pre-existing condition that maybe they or a family member had, or it would be unaffordable. So that's been greatly assisted with uh, ACA, and I think, um, I think the Urban Institute estimates that we'll have 1.5 million more entrepreneurs as a result of ACA. Well, job lock, that's a very interesting concept. Um, mm -hmm. Has that, uh, has it, have small business owners and their employees been able to jump to different opportunities because of the ACA? Mary? Absolutely. I mean, you, many people were staying in jobs. You know, there were the entrepreneurs that wanted to start a business and felt that they couldn't because they didn't, uh, they were worried about losing their insurance. They were tethered to the health insurance right. with their old employer. But there are plenty of people that just wanted to change jobs but were worried about losing health insurance and changing jobs. You know, before reform, you could be locked out of insurance because of a pre-existing condition um, or your health rates could go up when you were changing insurance because of your uh, track record. Um, all of that's changed. Now, the only underwriting data that a health insurer can look at is your age and whether you smoke. And even your age is capped. You know, previously it was uncapped where an older employee or an older consumer could be charged 10 times, 20 times more than a younger consumer. But now the most you can be charged is three times more. Um, well, so if someone is uh, self-employed out there and they're, uh, they're still thinking about uh, what to do with the ACA, what, what should they do? They should, gosh, they should go to the healthcare.gov and look at the uh, the exchange. Now we did just have the open enrollment period. Yes, and that just ended. That just ended. But okay. if you've had a life, a qualifying experience in your life, and you've changed positions, or you've left a job, or you've added a dependent, uh, you can find uh, the ability to enroll throughout the year, even through the individual exchange. So if they're self-employed, they're covered by the individual in exchange. Yes, mm -hmm. the, the the that exchange. But they're also covered by the mandate that thou thou 
thou must have health, health insurance, correct? Yes, or you could face a penalty. Or you can face a penalty. Yes. Okay, that's self-employed. Um, thanks to your staff, the number of small businesses between one and 25 employees, 94,431 firms with 456,000 people in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. um, what's, uh, what's the ACA story for, for these between one and 25? This is another group that's greatly assisted with this new law. So um, they have access to health insurance under SHOP, which is a small business health options program. Is that a separate website? It's You can get to it through healthcare.gov okay. as well. Um, it's a subset of the exchange, essentially. Okay. But it's for employer small businesses, so with one or more employee, up to 49 employees. But for the businesses with tw um, under 25 employees, they c the employer could have access to a healthcare premium tax credit. And this can be significant. So if the employer chooses to provide health care for their employees and they pay 50% or more of the self-only premium for the employee mm -hmm. and they pay their employees on average $50,000 a year and less um, and they have uh, 25 or less employees, uh, they could have access to a health care premium that's up to 50% if they choose to purchase health care through the shop. So and then the remaining part of the premium is tax deductible. So all of this works to make health care much more affordable. Um, how is Wisconsin? Now, now, you're the regional administrator, so you supervise many states. Mm -hmm. And in terms of some of these issues for the self-employed and businesses between 1 and 25, how, uh, what are you finding in Wisconsin compared to the other states that you supervise? Um, you know, we're finding that businesses all across the region are very interested in the opportunities under this, um, you know, and, and learning more and more about the, the health care premium. Uh, this health care premium goes back to 2010. A billion dollars has been paid out under this health care premium to date to small businesses. And you can go back and capture this health care premium if you haven't captured it yet, all the way back to 2010. You said a billion dollars. Now that's national. Any, national. any idea what the figure is for Wisconsin? I don't. Probably not. <laughs> okay. Uh, moving on. Um, between 25 and 49 employees, 5,775 5, firms in Wisconsin that employ 142,000. Mm -hmm. What are the ACA rules for those firms, ma'am? So again, for these firms, health care is completely optional as it is for all small businesses. Um, they have access to shop, though. They, they don't have access to the health care uh, tax uh, credit, but they do have access to shop, which is a great tool for these small businesses who just want to look at their options. And on shop, the health care plans are laid out side by side, they're banded by color. You know that they all are similar and that they carry uh, the 10 essential um, benefits, but they differ in uh, levels of coverage. Um, they're, they're metal bandits, so they start with bronze, they go to silver, mm -hmm. gold, and platinum. And with uh, silver carrying a 60% cost coverage, 70% under, I'm sorry, bronze, 60%, 70% silver, 80% uh, gold, 90% under the platinum. So all of this is side by side, the costs are side by side, and, and all of these businesses with up to 49 employees can easily go and uh, look at their options. In Wisconsin, you have over 15 carriers participating in the marketplace. How does that they, compare to some of the other states that you supervise? Um, it's good. We know that on average nationally there are about 40 plans per marketplace. You have 67. So you have a very rich uh, uh, selection of choices. I, uh, I have a follow-up follow question to be sure I understood something you said. If, uh, if the company has fewer than f 25 to 49 employees, do they not get any subsidies, premium subsidies? I'm sorry, if they have 25 to 49, they, they do not, they're not, uh, they, they are not eligible for the subsidies for the, for the tax care credit. Okay, mm -hmm. um, but the uh, smaller firms, uh, 1 to 25, are? Yes, and it's designed that way because it's the smallest of the small firms that really struggle to get access to health care. You know, some of these firms, you know, uh, have for a long time wanted to offer health care coverage to their employees, but they just were locked out. And we know that these are the firms that had zero buying power you know, when you have two and three employees, and if one employee got sick or one employee had a pregnancy, mm -hmm. their premiums could, you know, swing wildly year, and, year over year. Because they'd be rated and then those premiums exactly. would soar. Exactly, and all it, of that's done now. It's intriguing. When we talk about self-employed and businesses between 1 and 25 and 26 to 49, the numbers, 745,000 Wisconsin workers work mm -hmm. in those businesses, mm -hmm. which is, um, that's a pretty sizable number. Sure. Well, we know nationally that um, over half of Americans either own or work for a small business. So, you know, it's a big part of our economy. It's a you know, big part of our population that's impacted that, you know, are part of these small businesses that have 
for so long wanted to offer health care, and now they have more accessibility and it's more affordable, and you know that's what this uh, reform was all about. Let's move up the, move up the ladder a little bit. Mm -hmm. Employees with at least, uh, I'm reading from the, the SBA website, employees w employers with at least 50 but fewer than 100 full-time or full-time FDE employees will generally have an additional year until, until 2016 before these rules apply. Can mm -hmm. you elaborate on? Sure. So in 2015, uh, employers with 100 employees or more, um, if they choose not to offer health care or they um, offer health care that's not deemed affordable, they could be subject to a penalty, but a lot of different factors have to be in place to trigger that penalty. Next year, that drops down to 50 in 2016. And um, how's that penalty determined, the size of the penalty? Sure. Well, there are two different ways a penalty can be leveraged. Um, if, let's say, uh, a company chooses not to offer health care, um, if one of their employees goes to the exchange and receives health care through the individual exchange and they receive a subsidy, um, then that could trigger the penalty. And for those companies, um, they're, they're charged 2000 per employee um, or a after the first 30 employees. Um, and then if you have a company and you do offer health care coverage but it's not deemed affordable, um, then you're charged per employee that accesses the individual exchange and receives a subsidy. And when we talk about um, uh, uh, potential pen penalties in 2015 and 2016, are those tax years? In other words, are those penalties assessed uh, during 2015, calendar 2015, or not until they pay their taxes in spring of 2016? Yeah, it's always a look back. It's so it's when you're paying your taxes for 2015, they'll look back at the at the year before. Okay, and then finally, let's talk about um, companies with more than 100 employees. Mm -hmm. What are, what are the rules for them? Um, again, it's uh, it's it's they could be subject to the to the employer shared responsibility provision that I just described. So it's um, again, healthcare is optional. You know, at over a certain level, and again, this represents less than four percent of our employees that have over fifty employees. There could be a penalty um, involved if you choose not to provide healthcare coverage. But healthcare is essentially um, optional. Is there a so. gender issue here? Here's my question. Um, mm -hmm. uh, do women make up more employees of small businesses than men? Do you know? I think it would probably depend on the in industry, and I don't know the answer to that. But there is a gender uh, issue in healthcare in general, and that before reform, they could charge more for just insuring a woman, especially a woman of childbearing years. That's discrimination. So all of that was done away with, with healthcare reform. What's been generally the response of small businesses in the region that you oversee? And uh, here's my question. You've heard the fear. Small businesses were going to decide to stop offering, um, to stop buying insurance, to stop offering it, and just pay the penalties. Um, how's that, what, what's the record, excuse yeah, me? Yeah, I think I hear that through the media occasionally, depending on where the source is. But um, honestly, I get a lot of different responses speaking anecdotally to small businesses. And my, you know, my thought is that's a business decision. This is all, you're running your business, you're making, doing your own analysis, deciding what's right for your employees, what's right for your business, what you can afford. Um, all that this reform has done is made health care more affordable and more accessible. So that if you choose to offer it, you know, you have the ability to. Um, I'm intrigued by the U.S. Supreme Court is going to hear the appeal of uh, the issue is states like Wisconsin who haven't chosen to set up their own exchange. Mm -hmm. um, the issue is can subsidies be approved for both individuals and I assume small businesses mm -hmm. um, under the wording of the ACA? What are the implications if the Supreme Court holds narrowly to the law and says in states like Wisconsin no, no subsidies. Uh, you know, I, I don't even want to contemplate that. When we have 11.4 million Americans receiving benefits under the ACA, and I think uh, we'd have 11.4 million people who would be very upset if those benefits were taken away. I think, you know, uh, you know, this health care reform has tr truly proven to be effective. You know, the um, CDC, the Center for C Disease Control, looked back in the spring and said this year there are 10 million fewer uninsured Americans. That's the largest drop we've seen in that metric in over 40 years. So we know that health care um, reform is working. We know that the rate of increase in premiums has gone way down. Uh, before reform it was going up at about 8% a year. Last mm -hmm. year it went up by 1.7%. So um, 
I can't comment on what the Supreme Court will decide. I, it would be a tragedy to reverse such great progress that we've made under this reform. Prior to the ACA, premiums up 8%. eight percent. Mm -hmm. Post ACA, 1.7%. Yeah, post, post reform, it's been under 5% a year increase, and last year it was 1.7%. Um, the 1.7 percent is that both for those that buy uh, the uh, individually and small businesses? Uh, yeah, that's across that's across the board. Um, healthcare premiums across the board. Okay. Um, when the ACA was passed, it defined a full-time employee as someone who worked 30 hours a week. When I talked to Bill Smith, who's the president of the Wisconsin Federation of Independent Businesses, mm -hmm. he said, and I'm quoting here. That provision not only paints a bullseye on Americans who work more than 30 hours a week, but it created a financial imperative for some employers to cut back hours for their workers. Um, the thinking behind 30 hours a week? You know, you know, we at the Small Business Administration, um, our role is really to reach out and train small businesses around the um, benefits under this new law. We weren't there for the crafting of the legislation and I, I don't know when it, what went into that honestly. Um, and you know, we talk to businesses that have different uh, viewpoints on this. I've certainly heard that one and I've heard other viewpoints as well. Have you talked to small business owners who've said that they've had to lay off people or change people's hours to get them below the 30 hours? Again, I've read in the media that small businesses may do that, but I've never actually come across a small business that has, has said personally that they're doing that. And again, it would be a business decision. Um, there's a lot that goes into making a decision like that. I think um, in a lot of, you know, it's, it's an analysis that a business has to make for themselves. Does the Obama administration have a position on H.R. 40 in the House of Representatives, which would restore the 40-hour definition? Uh, you know, I, I'm really not allowed to even comment on pending legislation. Okay. Okay. Um, well, the uh, l uh, summary then, the picture in Wisconsin, um, ACA has helped was w small, bu small businesses in Wisconsin? Oh, definitely. Um, you know, again, we don't have the metrics around small businesses, but we know in the numbers that you cited, we have 147,000 sole proprietors, 94,000 small firms, 5,000 small firms with, I'm sorry, sorry 94,000 small firms with under 25 employees, and mm -hmm. 5,000 small firms with over uh, 24 employees. So we know all of those uh, small businesses have access to shop um, and to, to uh, healthcare under ACA. So, um, and we know that 205,000, almost 206,000 Wisconsin residents have enrolled. And of those residents that have enrolled, 78% of them are finding healthcare for under $100 a month. 90% of those who have enrolled um, are receiving subsidies. So it's absolutely helped individuals, sole proprietors, and small business owners. Our governor and our uh, lawmakers have decided to not set up a, uh, uh, a Wisconsin exchange. Do you think it would be in the best interest of Wisconsin for Wisconsin to set up uh, its own exchange? Well, um, you know, I oversee a six-state region, and we have examples of all models within those states. We have federally facilitated exchanges like the one in Wisconsin. We have state-run um, state exchanges like the one in Minnesota, and we have partnerships like the one in Illinois, which are a partnership between the state and the, um, and the federal government. Uh, what a difference a year makes. They're all working wonderfully right now, so <laughs> there's no wrong answer here, I think. Um. The subsidies that have gone to small businesses, have they gone to the larger firms, more than 50, more than 100, do, do you know? Uh, subsidies, uh, when, I, when I talk about subsidies, I'm speaking or to individuals. Oh, okay. And then the tax credits go to the firms of yes. 25, 24 okay. and under. Okay, I asked the wrong mm -hmm. question. Have the tax credits then gone to the larger firms with more than 50, more than 100? Tax credits are only, only businesses with under uh, 25 employees have okay. access to the tax credit. Okay. Well, given that we have a couple years of experience with the ACA, what's the SBA's goal for the next two to four years with the uh, ACA? Um, you know, we're just continuing to get the word out. You know, we lost a lot of ground in the beginning. You know, probably the first year was just clearing up myths and misinformation that was being spread around this important legislation. Um, we've come a long way. Our sessions are so productive, but I still run across small businesses that, you know, didn't realize the tax credit was out there. And, you know, I was in Indiana just two weeks ago, and I had a small business realize that they could go back to 2010 and capture money that was owed to them by the federal government. So, you know, our job is still to go out and get the word out and make sure 
small businesses know, you know, what's available to them under this important legislation and make sure that they're uh, going to shop and seeing um, what they can do for their employees. Can a small business owner who's juggling many, many things do this on her or his own or where do they need the expertise? You they know, go to the website, but you know, they might have a few questions, follow-up questions, so where should she or he go? Absolutely. I mean, for sole, for sole proprietors, for instance, the individual exchanges become much more streamlined. Last year there were 76 pages that you uh, went through on the website. It's down to 16. So it's much easier. But if a small business wants to go to their own broker or trusted uh, resource, that's absolutely an option as long as they're looking at qualified plans, if they're you know looking to get the tax credit. But if they want more information generally, um, they should go to healthcare.gov. Um, also, SP SBA has a very helpful page. It's spa.gov slash healthcare. It has very carefully curated information about small businesses and healthcare and links to the exchange. Um, and if you just want to talk to somebody, there's a phone number I can give. Please give. 1-800-706-7893. Um, okay. uh, that's a call to the Help Center and they can answer any questions you have about shop or the individual exchanges. So in summary, the ACA has been good for Wisconsin small businesses, but there's it could do so much more good. The more people that know, the better. I mean, as we saw, it went from 139,000 people enrolled last year to 206,000 this year, and there's more to go. So okay. we just need to let more people know about the great benefits under this law. Excellent. Thank you so much. Marianne O'Brien Markowitz is the Regional Administrator of the U.S. Small Business Administration. Thank you for stopping at Wisconsin Eye. Thank you, Steve. Thank you.